Hello and welcome to the latest Norfolk FA podcast. My name is Matt Carpenter, Football Services Manager here at Norfolk FA and once again I'll be undertaking the role of host. And as usual, I'm joined by a number of guests within the room. Um, so we have Tom Constance, who's a regular on pretty much all of our podcasts, I think, while we're in the, the midst of the Cup season. So Tom, good afternoon to you. Hi Matt. Um, next to him we have Bex Burton, who is furiously scribbling away what she's going to be saying when I come to her in a few moments. Bex is our Marketing and Communications Manager, and I think we're going to be talking about rebranding of the County Fires programme, Bex, when we get to it. Yep, we are. Hello, everyone. And moving around, we then have Gavin Lemon, Chief Executive and Successful Manager of Norfolk Under-18, so you can give us an update on that. And obviously the draw has now been done, so we'll come back to that in a few minutes as well. Hello Matt. And finally on my immediate left I have Chris Brown. Chris is another prime example of what we say many times about people with many hats. Chris is Chairman of Horsford FC and Vice Chairman of the Norfolk Combined Youth League. So they are probably the two key roles. And um, Chris you're joining us uh, today just to talk really about the FA Youth League's conference that we attended, uh, yourself and I at St George's Park. Last weekend. At the weekend and you actually had a, a presenting role at it. Indeed yeah. Tell us a little bit about what you were talking about and how you felt that went. Yeah, no, so uh, I spoke about the um, improvements that are coming with um, digital technology for clubs and leagues um, throughout the country. So the FA recently implemented Match Day um, and that's filtering through. Um, Clubs are picking up um, and using that. Leagues are just discovering on how they can get behind that and promote that more. So that's why I sort of pushed with them. So so Match Day is kind of out there but we've done a sort of little bit of a launch but it's all been quite quite soft so for people who might be listening who don't even know what match day is just tell us a little bit about what what the app involves and and the role that you're currently playing actually working with the fa so match day is um the fa's answer to run full-time for coaches so when you're out and about after you finish your match um, it's having that ability to submit your score submit all the information about your match as soon as that match is completed on the sideline on your mobile phone at the minute it's a bit of a long, long process, sending the text message in, going home, loading up your laptop or your iPad or whatever, and completing that up to three or four days later. And sometimes that data, that information in your head isn't as crisp as it was straight after that game. So having match day on your phone is useful for me at the minute. And uh, there's some great features coming in the next few months as well. So with your Horsford hat on, you're, you're kind of fully bought into it. And I think I'm right in saying you've got pretty much all of your teams already on there and using it? Yeah, my teams throughout the club are on it. Um, got a few final parents to just get on board, but um, the players and the coaches are all active in using it. Um, we're waiting for a few enhancements to come from the FA to make sure it's fully usable. But um, yeah, we're on board and away we go. And Bex, as well as having your marketing role here, you've obviously managed Acle United women's football team. Mm-hmm. Um, have you had much exposure to Match Day yet in that particular role? Uh, yeah, we are on it. Um, I've got a few of my players on there. Well, most of my players, to be fair. Um, the functionality of it has been really good. Um, you can set up events for training as well as games. Um, we haven't actually used it for a fixtures yet because we're still waiting for a couple of the girls to get on um, with regards to their fan uh, and their email addresses. But... As, as far as goes selecting your squad and things like that, it looks really smart. Um, really quite simple and easy to use once everyone is in there. It's just that you know that first stage of getting everyone sort of onto the platform and using it so that people can mark their attendance and mark their availability. Um, I believe, I don't know whether it has been sorted, but there was, a, there was an issue as well with selecting a substitute and potentially them getting a notification that they're a substitute before the game. Yeah, that sort of <laughs> so, stuff's been done now, yeah. so I just said you're in the squad. So, yeah, so when so they don't turn up, you know that yeah, they got so their notification. There, there was, it? That, yeah. that was a little bit of reluctance for me at the first, you know, because I don't, I don't want to, to let them know that they're not starting until just before the game, not three days before. Hmm. But um, no, it, it, it looks like a really smart um, step forward from the FA in all honesty. And um, I know Chris has just touched on some of the functionalities that will be coming in the new year. I believe that is in regards to payments. Yeah, well. so um, they've partnered with a big payment provider so that um, parents and players can pay their subs for match day um, in the app. They've still got the option to pay cash, so don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, they can process their payments and that comes straight into the club. And I, personally, from my experience, that's going to be huge because it's you know everything this day and age is about convenience and a lot of the girls now paying things via online banking or can i just transfer it to the account and then secretary's like well i need to move this money here and move that there whereas now everything can be done via an app on the day and it's easier for both parties so it's a really good step forward i think so match day is the future yeah and i think we're fortunate in norfolk that we 
jumped on the player registrations online yeah, a few years ago. Definitely. Otherwise, we wouldn't be in this position now where you know, some we're, some counties still not got people online. Yeah, let alone on, of leads, on an yeah. app, shall we say? So, Gavin, just on that, then talking about player registrations, obviously your role as chief executive and also part of the FA Council, you have a lot of contact with with other counties. So, as a county, are Norfolk still quite a long way ahead in in the player registration field? Yes, um, well, it's, it's one of the key KPIs within the new FA National Game strategy. Um, we we are pretty much ahead of everyone in regards to the percentage of teams using the online platform. So, we will do that on behalf of the adult game at the moment. So, they're still paper based, but we utilise the same system. Um, so the clubs can still receive the same benefits for our youth leagues that are fully online this year. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure we're ahead of most counties. I won't say all, um, but I'll say the majority. So it's always pleasing to see that we're, we're ahead of the game. Which is good. And Chris, so we spoke about the, the conference that we were at at the weekend. So you were there partly to present, but also partly to represent the league. Yep. Um, Karen and Darren for your league were there. And then we had Paul and Sean from the Norfolk and Suffolk Youth League, as well as myself as they represented the county. And there were a couple of occasions at that which was particularly pleasing where we were held up as kind of a, a good example of how leagues and, and counties can work together. So just talk to us a little bit about your kind of experience with your league, how on, of dealing with Norfolk FA. Yeah, so I think we're really grateful for the support we get from the county, um, especially when it's been, with new technology and stuff coming on board. We've been, we've, we strive for player registration as soon as we set up in 2016. Um, we're glad that we were able to pilot that back then. And the support we've had from Sophie, Hannah, Rachel, when they've been doing the play registration stuff, it's been key for us and it's been massive. It's good. So how did you find the rest of the weekend? I know you, obviously you had to shoot away on Fulton on the Sunday, I did, but, yeah. but, and I guess you were tied up for a lot of the Saturday, but was it, was it a useful weekend for you? Yeah, no, some of the workshops were really useful. Um, it was useful to hear feedback from other leagues and other counties where things that I hadn't picked up on, they had picked up on. Um, and yeah, it's key and it's useful to just come come together and find that out. Yeah, sometimes sort of networking and sharing ideas is good, isn't it? Because you, you get in your own bubble, you get with your management committee, but taking the time out to, to talk to other leagues about the goods and the bads of what they're doing is, is sometimes as much benefit as actually the conference itself, isn't it? Yeah. So no, I, I thought it was a it was a good, productive, albeit very busy weekend at times. So um, your other hat then is uh, chair of Horsford FC, I think mm-hmm. you said vice chair, chairman of Horsford FC. Um, how's that season going for the club? Yeah, it's chaotic as always. Um, Obviously, we've we've uh, spent a lot of time and in our community ch- community chat standard state over the last year, so that's been useful to build up on, um, increasing our number of teams every season. So this season, I think we're at about 26, 27 teams, um, and it's key for us that we continue that growth. So I'm exploring walking football over the next few weeks, um, exploring um, new opportunities for facilities and investment with development of land. So it's big big work at the minute. So what, what would you put your success down to as a club? Because you have won awards from us, certainly, and, and as you say, you are growing, and I think the club has a really good reputation at the moment. How, how has that come about? I think it's just having an active set of volunteers that are willing to commit the time. Um, we've all got a great ethos that we want to progress, we want to stride, and we want to be at the top of the pile, and that's key for us in um, pushing the forward and being the best we can be. Yeah, no, the club the club is going well, and and I think you help outrun some of the teams, and, and I think you have a hand with the vets team, is that right? Yeah, as well? so, I give uh, Tony a hand with the vets. That's a very different experience to what I've been used used to in youth football, but yeah, I love it on Sunday afternoon. So on the on the last podcast that we did, we spoke about the uh, the the experience we had of covering your game against I think it was Thetford recently, which I yeah. think you were at. Yeah, and I was on the side of Thetford. So you, yeah. you saw Tom and Bryn working away. I did, yes. How, how was that? <laughs> yeah, no, it was a good game. Um, the lads stride forward it was a, another convincing result um, we were there supporting the Rainbow Laces campaign as well so the whole squad had the had the Laces in for the game um, to touch, touch the team on the sideline did as well as well as the Thetford guys and the referee Matt so yeah it was a really good experience yeah, I think the support for Rainbow Laces this year has been Phenomenal, amazing yeah. hasn't it basically you know, we've had three weeks of blitzed coverage pretty much everyone's been keen to be involved unfortunately there's been the odd negative comment because there, there tends to be on these sort of things but the positive is massively outweigh the negative I think hasn't it Max? Yeah it's been it's been a fantastic campaign this year when you look back to last year and we were one of the few counties to be involved in the in the country for what was I think two weekends of promotion and you know Norfolk did embrace it last year as well um, I think maybe some teams clubs leagues thought maybe that they missed out a little bit last year actually on hindsight to see that positive 
um, coverage and involvement engagement and this year the interest and the support of it has been fantastic and you know Norfolk have, have really really gone all out and the fact that we were able to sort of partner up with Norwich City Football Club and Aviva with regards to making sure that football in this county was was leading the way across the nation really um, from from the pro game to all the way to youth clubs you know the competitions that we put out brilliant we were in a we were able to send someone to the Rotherham game which was Norwich City's fi fi uh, feature fixture sorry um, and then yesterday I believe it was we announced that Harlan Colts were our winner of the club competition um, and thanks to our partnership with Discount Football Kits we were able to give them some really good coaching equipment and a £40 voucher to buy more um, those kind of things are a real, real step up for, for everything in our county with regards to this year and everyone's really got behind it but I think in all honesty you look at it nationwide this year and it's been brilliant you know across across the EFL and the Premier League and you know badge have changed colour everyone's really got behind it and you know hopefully it'll continue to grow year on year and as with a lot of other initiatives it uh, makes football more inclusive for everyone and makes everyone feel safe and involved in the game which is ultimately what it's all about i think you you rebranded yourself didn't you also yeah, yeah we did yeah, on it, yeah. for a few weeks yeah That's very yeah. smart yeah. did you do that i did Man of many talents, well. man of many talents. Um, we did a lot of feature matches, of course, on the on the Rainbow Laces as well. Um, and one of those was in the Primary Cup, which links us on to cup football. So that's the reason that both Gavin and Tom are in the room. And I'll start with Gavin and our under 18s. For the last podcast, we had Kate, who does all the work behind the scenes in, in keeping things ticking over and does a, an amazing job for us. But obviously, you're the main man actually on the on well, maybe not quite on the pitch, but certainly in terms of leading the team. Um, what was the game like, and and how was it for you in the dugout? Yeah, it was um, very different to the to the Cornwall challenge that we had. We obviously had the significant travel in the first fixture, um, and the weather conditions in the Cornwall game really levelled the game out. So, Isle of Man was was a different proposition um, where we were at home on a decent pitch with the, with the the weather on our side as well. So, it it was always going to be the football does the talking this time and that was a different challenge for the players um, and I, I got to see them in a different environment where um, it was going to be their quality more than anything else that would get us through to the next round and and I am have anticipated this is a really talented group we've got some really good individuals technically strong uh, probably technically stronger than the group last year that, that ended up winning it so it's a case whether we can piece that all together and perform on the day uh, and cup football is very much that we had no preparation time we had no training sessions with the boys um, so it's literally how do they perform on the day under that pressure situation and for the first two games I've got nothing but compliments for them do I think we can play better yeah I really do I think this is a real talented group that that can do do more than what they are doing but at the end of the day all they need to do is get into the next round and they've done that on two occasions now well, that is, that is the ultimate game with cup football. And I guess it's quite frustrating for you then as the manager that you don't get to do more with them. And we talk a lot about when you have international managers, they complain about not having a lot of time with players. You've got even less than that because you, you pretty much see them on a the match day then. Yeah, I quite like the challenge though, to be fair. It's, it's a different type of, of management. Um, you know, you could look at it and go, well, with, with the time that the boys actually spend now playing, they're all playing probably two, three times a week. You don't really want to add... To that and you want them to be as fresh as possible so us throwing in another training session ahead of a fixture probably isn't the best thing for them physically um, so we want them to come as fresh as possible both mentally and physically um, and they can take on information what I've learned from from working with young players over the last couple of years is that they're, they're really quick to grasp information um, and as soon as you can understand each of them individually, which I'm starting to do with the, with the two games we've now had with them, you know which players can take on more and which players can take on less. Mm -hmm. um, and, and hopefully what I've learned in the, in the last two games will help us in this next fixture. Which is? Sussex away. Um, um, do we have a date for that game yet? Pretty much. Um, it's the first Sunday when we come back in the new year. So right, okay. that's not out in the... In the public, what it is now. Podcast, <laughs> yeah. Heard it here first. Um, yeah, it's been confirmed with Sussex. Uh, I think today, uh, so it's the first Sunday, which is different again because we're normally playing on a on a Saturday. So our preparation will be slightly different. I actually might get the players together on the Saturday um, ahead of the Sunday fixture. Yeah, so that's the first Sunday back. So they need to be watching what they're doing. 
over the Christmas period. Oh, I'm sure they will. Do we do we have quite a good spread of clubs involved this year from where the players come from? Yeah, we have. Um, we've got a high number of clubs um, and different sort of football programmes that go on as well. And the majority of players are, are playing adult football, uh, which is all, what I always look for in an under 18. Um, I don't, you know, I want them to be challenging themselves in the adult game uh, for their own personal development, player development. So. Yeah, they're from, I think, last count was six or seven clubs within the squad. Um, so, yeah, which is good. Um, but does create another problem that they're, some of them aren't used to playing with each other. So. Yeah, I suppose. But then I guess in terms of the actual quality of the player, then I guess a lot of the credit that goes to those clubs that are looking after them week in, week out, and indeed the clubs that they've grown up with. Yeah, 100%. No, we, the experience they have with us is, is extremely limiting. So... At the end of the day, the, the quality of the player that we're working with has nothing to do with the work that, that I and the coaches undertake. Everything comes from what the clubs do and the own individual player does. Um, and I've seen a real committed bunch um, these last couple of years that both get support from their clubs but actually have the real determination individually to be the best that they can be. Um, and you've seen that with, with someone like Billy last year who's now got himself a professional contract at Norwich his clubs have played a part in that, but the biggest person that's played a part in it is him himself. So um, I hope to see the same from, from players from this squad. Yeah, let's hope so. So we've got a quarter-final are we at now? Quarter-final yeah, to quarter look forward to early in the new year. And then I think, Tom, that's where we're at with the various bits of paper you've got in front of you for the cup competitions that we are at the moment as well. We are, so yes, yeah, with fourth round of the primary cup last weekend um, and then the third round for the, for the under-12, Stuart Dray Cup, John Savage and the Veterans Cup. You've got a lot of results sat yeah. in front of you. Are there any particular games that kind of jumped out in terms of either the scores or, or the teams involved? Um, in terms of the primary cup, uh, we had our feature fixture, which was Rocklands v Bothop Rovers. Um, we had a lot of coverage done by Rachel, um, and Rocklands did come out on top uh, to one in extra time. And then we had another extra time game with Dustindale Reserves uh, being AC Mill Lane Reserves. And we, both, and we had last year's finals Gate Reserves and Cal Rangers both go through uh, to Friday's draw. So there's a few names to look forward to. Well, you say Friday's draw, it's not Friday's draw, is it? Because Oh, no, that one isn't. Yes, Sorry, no, I take that back. Yes, yes, I take that back. Is. I was getting ahead of myself in terms of what we're going to be doing in a bit. But we also had um, Veterans Cup action this weekend yep. then and three youth competitions, didn't we? Yeah, so the Veterans, obviously, we're both finalists. So Crimford and Chris's Horsford um, go through. Um, and we also had... Um, who was it? And an extra time game with Eastern um, so Plains coming out top against Newsman Battlehalla in the Vets. Um, in terms of the youth, there's, there's too many games to go through. <laughs> um, a lot of high scoring games. I think we end up going out to 20 for one of them, which is great to be honest. But um, we also had some extra time games. So Durham Saints, oh uh, no, sorry, Elsham came out on top against Durham Saints in extra time 4 3. So a few close matches. This is obviously yeah. the first year that we've done an under 12 competition. Yeah. So how has that gone so far? It's gone really well so far. There's been some high scoring games, but there's also been some tight games. Um, with also Chris's horse for, um, in the quarter final. It's all about course. you, Chris. It's all about you. You don't manage all those. <laughs> no, you, not fortunately <laughs> enough. <laughs> yes, it's gone well so far, and uh, hopefully we can do it again next year. So, as you quite rightly said, the primary cup draw is being done on Friday yeah. on Nick's show, but the other four yeah. we are doing in oh, three hours' time, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. So, back on the camera, yeah. something a little bit different. All of the staff that we've got available in the office are going to be involved, so mm-hmm. people will be able to follow that on our social media channels in a little while then. Yeah. So, that's something for us all to look forward to. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay, um, Bex, coming back to yourself then. Uh, I've got on the notes in front of me County Fives rebrand. So our County Fives programme has obviously been running for a number of years mm-hmm. now. Just talk to us a little bit about the rebrand that's happened, and I think we've got some exciting new potential opportunities to play as well. Yeah, well, uh, County Fives has been going on uh, in the county now for quite a while. Um, it the small side of football has grown year on year now for. for years all over the country uh, and Norfolk's no exception to that you know modern day people's work life balance is, is a lot different to how it used to be and you know some people find it hard to fit the football around their lifestyle so small sided football on a Monday to Friday or you know it, it fits into people's lifestyles a little bit better and it keeps potentially people involved in the game um, in addition it's good for fitness it's good to supplement traditional football uh, and it's an opportunity for people to enjoy the game that they love with their friends, you know, in a little bit of a, should we say, less pressured environment, although some people do take it quite seriously. Um, 
we host County Fives all around the county, uh, and recently we have just completed a rebrand of that, which I was obviously very heavily involved in. Um, so the brand itself and the, the product that we put out there has got this new look and feel. It's been refreshed. It, it's got a new modern look, which in, in all honesty sort of fits in with modern football. You look at the Premier League and the EFL there, their branding's very simplistic now and, mm-hmm. and fresh. And a lot of people now resonate with that. They want that sort of professional feel about things. And we want to appeal to the people that want to play the game in, the, in that guise. So we, we've done a rebrand. And as part of that, we're pushing out all the different opportunities there are to play at different venues around the county and also launching some new opportunities as well. So it brings a good opportunity for me to talk about those in this uh, podcast, um, one of which is a new under-19s provision that we have been pushing out on Twitter and, and various social media outlets, which we're quite excited about, actually. So one of our FDC centres, the FDC Open Academy, which is based in uh, Norwich, is going to be launching a new under-19s county fires provision in the new year. It's going to take place on Friday nights under the lights, and it's basically an opportunity for those involved in either the adult game or the under-18 game, uh, 16 to 19 year olds, to go and play with their peers and people their own age, rather than just the adult game, you know. There is that, you hit 16, you're involved in the adult game, you might play in the under-18s, but, you know, there is a potential expectation to go join the County Fives League that, you, you know, you're playing against 30, 35 year olds, 25 year olds. It's an opportunity to just give a little bit of a, a chance for a slightly different provision for people involved in post-16 formats to, to play with their peers. Um, it could be completely recreational, a little bit of fun. It also could be something to supplement, you know, like we've spoken to Chris actually about uh, the North Combined Youth League, the under-18 teams in there. It could be an extra training night for them or fitness, you know. There's a lot of advantages to playing the small-sided game, you know, speed of speed of play, decision making, first touch, fitness, things like that. Um, but it's also, like I say, it's a chance for people to play with their peers. Um, and we're hoping that it'll create a positive social environment for those players, um, potentially increase player self-esteem and allow for a, a really positive experience for those players to join in something that's really catering for, specifically for them. And, and transition from youth to adult is something that is a challenge of in course. Norfolk and indeed across yeah. the country. And, and, and Chris has effectively just said, your league, Started an under-17 provision a couple of seasons ago, under-18s yeah, this yeah. season, and that's all around that same area, isn't it? Yeah, the 17 provision um, I pushed for um, a couple of years ago now, and did the same last year we, when we went for the 18s, and teams have got on board with it. Um, that gap has always been a struggle for everyone, and I think everyone knows that. And I think having something like the under-19 provision is great as well at county five level, just to give the extra bit of football in people's lives. Absolutely, and I, and I guess numbers-wise, then you aren't necessarily looking at having to find big squads. It's a relatively yeah, it's small, a small thing. What's the interest been so far? Then? Uh, it's been really positive, actually. We've got seven teams that have put themselves down for uh, the register of interest. You know, sign-ups haven't actually even opened yet. Uh, they do open next Friday, the 14th, um, and from then you'll be able to secure yourself with a, with a place in the league. It is limited, and um, there's only so much pitch face and and time on the evening. So I think the maximum we can go to is either 10 or 12. Um, so people are keen and you know like like you just said there is that challenge with the the post 16 potential drop off and bridging the gap between 16 to to adult football and if we're trying to address that in the traditional game then why wouldn't the same things creep into the small sided game Um, and all it is is about getting people playing and if you can create a different environment or a slightly improved environment for those people then then happy days you know we get people on the pitch and we get them enjoying their football if it can help then play in the traditional game brilliant yeah absolutely i mean i, I attended a meeting in the northwest norfolk league clubs last night and this came up at, at that as well not specifically the under 19 provision as such but the transition from youth to adult and and they were saying you know there's there's some 16 year olds who absolutely can just jump straight into the yeah, the adult game and gavin spoke earlier about you know the senior county players as it were who are doing that but there's another lot who aren't necessarily physically or even mentally prepared to to play yeah. against older people basically we all went through high school and i think there's a massive difference sometimes between a school year if you're born if you're born at the very start of september and you're one of the oldest in the year or the very end of july and you're one of the youngest in the year that can be huge with regards to development physically and mentally and everything else I personally think there's a massive difference between a 16-year-old and a 19-year-old. So, you know, if you, if you are a late developer or a young developer and you, or you feel like you're not you know, quite ready for it, then this is the perfect stepping stone towards that. And like I said, more importantly, create, it's more about creating that positive environment for players. 
which obviously the FA are quite big on now with, with Gareth Southgate's handbook that's been launched and everything like that. It's about creating the right environment for people. Absolutely. Football for all. Exactly that. Well, okay. I'll, I'll just come in there yeah. just to the stats don't lie, does it? You know, there's a number of six, 16 plus that stop playing. That purely for me is because they don't want to play the adult game. I don't think there's anything more than that. There's weekend work within that. But quite simply, I think that's a choice. And young people are choosing not to play the adult game until either later in life or, or not at all. And this hopefully would be a, a provision that we could extend to other areas of the county that can keep people engaged in the game. Because if they love it, we want them to continue to love it until they're in a position where they can tra- transition into an adult provision, whether that be recreationally or or traditionally. So that's the aims of what we're trying to do. So hopefully yeah. that, that can be a success. And if you are listening and you feel like you have a team or you know you, you want to enter a team into that, all you have to do is get in contact with the FDC at Open Academy or the marketing team at Norfolk FA and we can register your interest in that and give you a call next week. Um, it, Like Gavin has said, it is about creating the right environment and keeping people in football and that's, you know, County Fives is a big part of that. Um, and we do have a couple of other opportunities going around at the moment as well. Um, in the the FDC is the women's league, so um, a centre in both Orpin and Norwich is um, where we host our women's league on a Monday night. There's a current vacancy there, um, so for any women's teams that are out there that are looking for a potential uh, recovery session on a Monday night, because I know everyone plays on a Sunday, or a little bit of fitness for those players that maybe didn't get a full run out on a Sunday. Again, it's fantastic. Also, brilliant for first touch and technical side of things. You know, you find a lot of women's teams are going to go and enter that, and it's going to improve them on Sunday as well. Um, and also, again, sort of first news of it really, but the Wyndham uh, facility that is being built, we are launching a new Canic Five position there in the new year as well. So if you are based around the Wyndham area, I believe at Ketts Park. It's going to host uh, what will be our newest County Fives League. So if you are sort of situated in those areas or that area, you can you can certainly get involved and register your interest now. And I know that um, Ketz Park has hosted games because I think Tom, one of our Veterans League yes. games, has played yes. on there at the weekend, wasn't um, it? Yeah, yeah. so Wyndham played uh, Cottage last week, I think it was. Yeah, and I think they're going to play all their games for the rest of the season and hopefully next season as well. And I think perhaps just the final thing to say on the playing opportunities then, which we spoke about before with the over 45 provision that the league is looking to start. I think the yeah. survey has garnered a lot of interest in yeah. the last couple of weeks, thanks to your promotion and, and Bex and Brim putting it out there. So, 28, 29 yeah, of interest. so there's potentially a demand for that, yeah. and, and we're still looking for more views. Is the survey still open? Yes, yeah, it's open until the last Friday of December. So in simple terms, if, they've, if anybody's heard anything on this podcast of any of the provisions, whether they're interested involved in the combined youth league, Horsford, uh, the new under 19s provision, or the under 45, uh, under 45, the over 45s provision, simply contact us here at County HQ, and we will point them in the right direction. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for their time, particularly Chris for taking the time to come in. Um, we now have just under three hours to go and put our woolly jumpers on before we do the cup tours later today. Thank you all. <laughs>